Let's bring in the former Victorian Labor Minister, Phil Daladakis, now a member of the Australian Jewish community as well. Philip, thanks for your time as always. Let's start a bit closer to home. We heard the UN Secretary General there. The pressure continues, the scrutiny continues upon Israel and protests at home uh, continue like we saw at the Port of Melbourne, Phil. Yeah, nice to be with you again. Again, not under these circumstances, but look, Kieran, the protests at the port are unfortunate. They uh, are causing a lot of uh, bad will in the community. They, I've got no doubt they think that they're doing the right thing. Uh, it is lawful to protest in this country. But I can only say that uh, the comments of Premier Minns in New South Wales in relation to uh, similar planned protests in Botany are very strong and should be uh, replicated uh, across the country. The Greens themselves continue their strong advocacy uh, in support of Palestinians. They walked out of the parliament earlier in the week. Uh, you, you said protest is part of our democracy. Of course it is. What did you make of their parliamentary protest? Well, I've never seen a group of people or a political party that purports and pretends to be mainstream attempt to imitate a far left fringe political party in my political lifetime. The actions of the Green senators uh, belie both the interests of the Palestinian people and also uh, of uh, gross hypocrisy, given that on your program previously, I have stated that uh, they have refused similar types of calls to arms, protests, walkouts in relation to the nearly 500,000 dead in Yemen, which is, I think, the example that I used the other day. But uh, in uh, Darfur, there were about 750-odd people that were murdered by uh, Islamic fundamentalist extremists just a couple of days ago. But I bet you can't find anything about that uh, on Hansard either because they have a Jewish problem and the Greens political party are only interested in Arab Muslim deaths if they're at the hands of a conflict with the Jewish-Israeli state. The calls for a humanitarian uh, pause, certainly to extend to a ceasefire, are not just the Greens. You heard, we've heard the UN uh, right across the board, uh, political leaders internationally calling for uh, at least a pause, if not a ceasefire. Is the US administration likely to head in that direction, given there are calls from quarters of their own party, the Democratic Party, who want Joe Biden to support Palestinian civilians more than he is? So let me answer that in a number of different ways, Kieran. The first one, of course, is that there is a significant difference between a pause for humanitarian aid to be able to successfully get through to the Palestinian people in southern Gaza through the Rafah crossing with Egypt and a ceasefire. Uh, Secretary Clinton uh, said it best that a ceasefire only benefits the terrorist group Hamas because it allows them to restock and be able to uh, make sure that they reaffirm whatever positions they're wanting from a military objective. Now, I just, I want to make it clear to your listeners because I think this is also a really important point. When I was in the parliament, there was nobody that called out Benjamin Netanyahu more than I did. No one that spoke more in a two-state solution than I did. I would hope that Benjamin Netanyahu is no longer the prime minister yesterday because I don't believe that he represents the interests of Israel. And when you call for a pause for humanitarian aid, it's most important to respect the wishes of uh, partners and also allies. And I think that that can be done regardless of the military objections, uh, objectives rather, of attempting to take Hamas out, which again yeah. broke the ceasefire on the 7th of October. And this is something that the Greens political party in particular continues to miss. Well, let me, this action, let me this bring you up to, I just want to bring our viewers up to, to speed on this one because the Greens have just launched yet another protest, Phil. Just stay where you are and I'll, I'll get your thoughts on this. The Greens have just launched another protest in the Senate this afternoon chanting for a ceasefire in Gaza. Senator Jordan Steele-John moved a motion calling on the Albanese government to condemn Israel's ongoing invasion and demanded all sides support a ceasefire. The Green senators held up printed signs saying ceasefire now before being shut down by the Deputy President. 
We must join together with the community and declare cease fire now. Cease fire now. Right, cease you, you fire know now. You know that's out of order. Cease fire now. Cease fire now. I call you. I call you to order. Put those props away. Earlier this week, the Greens also walked out of the Senate, as we discussed with Phil Daladakis a moment ago. But Phil, that those protests continue in the Senate. They'll continue next week when Parliament sits once again. And to be fair, they do represent a big chunk of the population who would support those sentiments. Well, I would suggest to you, Kieran, that they represent a portion of the community. There's no doubt about that. But I don't believe that they represent the majority of Australia's population that continue to be horrified by the images that they saw from October 7. Now, in relation to the green stunt yet again, what you are witnessing uh, is actions of people that are akin to university students. They're not serious people. They don't want to be taken seriously. They are a fringe group and they are getting more and more fringe as each day goes by. And if they were interested in peace, the first thing that the senators should say, Senator Steel John in particular, uh, is to call for the release of the 240-odd uh, hostages that were, by the way, again, taken from Israel on the 7th of October back into Gaza. If they're not prepared as the very first thing to do to call that out and call for their safe return, they are not serious about a peaceful outcome and they are not serious about an objective that actually protects the Palestinian, the innocent Palestinian people against the issues that Hamas as a terrorist organisation continue to permeate throughout this conflict. Phil Daladakis, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Kieran. Have a good day.